With people holed up for weeks now during the stay-at-home order, this weekend's Minnesota fishing opener could be a big one. Record fishing license sales indicates anglers will be eager to get out of the house and try their luck on local waters. We talked with Duluth News Tribune outdoors writer John Myers about the opener. It's going to be interesting to see on Saturday um, how many people go and how many people decide to stay home and not go. It's um, it's a, a little bit of a mixed message from the state. They're encouraging people to get outdoors and recreate, but they're also staying close, say stay close to home. So um, that might be tough for some people if they live in an urban area or if they live in uh, a place that's not near a lake or a river. But, um, you know, I, I really don't know what to say. You know, I don't know what to expect. Other than that, this um, pretty much unprecedented increase in early fishing license sales. So people are obviously thinking about it. Um, and they're, I, I don't know if they're trying to get ahead of the curve and maybe uh, avoid the long lines on Thursday and Friday, uh, or if there are really that many more people who want to go fishing. We'll find out later in the year. Seems like with people having been cooped up for the past six weeks, seven weeks, that maybe there's just this overwhelming desire to get outside and enjoy, uh, enjoy the fishing opener. Yeah, and hopefully people will uh, use common sense and so social distance. It's maybe tough to do in a bait shop or on a dock or at a boat landing. Um, and I assume we'll see some people in masks while they're doing that. It'll be, it'll be unprecedented, I think, for a fishing opener. Um, we're already seeing that uh, use of the state parks and um, river fishing along the North Shore, which opened up a few weeks ago when the ice went out. It's been very busy. Um, the state parks have been full on weekends, the parking lots. And um, some people are not social distancing, and some of the conservation officers have had to remind people that uh, just because you're outdoors in the great outdoors up north doesn't mean you're necessarily safe, because if you're in a line of people walking on a trail, it could be just as bad as if you were in downtown Minneapolis. So, Speaking of that, does the DNR expect to do anything different, uh, say, at the landings and as they're patrolling due to the restrictions uh, with COVID? Well, the DNR has already said they're not going to arrest anybody or issue any tickets if you're not in your own community. So, um, but they've been trying to promote that for about the last six weeks as they meet people, as the conservation officer have contact with people. Um, they're also, you know, have to remind, they have to protect themselves too. So they're not going to be getting too close to folks. But my guess is it's going to be a gentle reminder um, and, you know, hope folks that go ahead and enjoy the day without uh, having to worry too much about the COVID. Now, you've been writing a lot of articles uh, for the News Tribune here over the last uh, week or two about the opener. You've talked with a lot of experts. What are they expecting as far as uh, how good the fishing will be uh, opening weekend? Well, it looked really good uh, even through today with warmer temperatures and sunshine. What The key right now is to warm that water temperature up because the fish in cold water tend to be a little bit sluggish, especially after spawning, uh, the arduous task of uh, rearing their, their next uh, crop of young fish. So, um, but what I'm what kind of what I'm guessing is that it uh, spawn happened early enough so they'll be kind of uh, refreshed and ready to go uh, and hungry for the opener on Saturday. Um, the key is going to be I think the weather for the day which I'm hearing mid-20s Saturday morning so it's going to be a cold morning to get out there and try to start fishing but maybe 50s by the afternoon so I, you know Minnesotans are used to that in the opener. If it's not raining it's usually snowing so we're kind of used to that. Uh, any changes to regulations on inland waters this year that uh, anglers should know about? It seems like back in the day when I first started fishing, you know, the, the limit was the same on every lake. You didn't have to think about that. But now you have to really know uh, what the regulations are on the waters you're fishing. Yeah, it's almost impossible to try to, to wrap that up even in a newspaper story uh, because it's, it's almost lake to lake now and region to region. There aren't any um, major new regulations for our area. But folks need to grab that when they get their license, get that fishing booklet, that synopsis, and know what they are for the lakes. Because um, with modern kind of uh, fishery science the way it is, they're able to fine tune regulations like slot limits for specific lakes now, and specific rivers. So you really need to know where you are that day, what you're fishing, and what that slot limit is. Because if you're off by an inch or a half inch, um, the game warden might not give you that benefit of the doubt. So know before you go. What have you heard from uh, bait shop owners? Are they expecting business to pick up? I know they've been hit really hard. Even getting ready for the season has been difficult with, with, uh, with the stay-at-home order. Yeah, the one good thing is we're hearing that there isn't any minnow shortages here. It seems like the last few years um, there have been issues with minnow trappers and minnow uh, wholesalers actually getting bait to the stores. And what I'm hearing this year, that's not the case. There should be plenty of minnows. Um, and I know a few of them are, are doing sort of like curbside pickup for minnows where you can call ahead, 
give them your credit card number and then uh, they'll come out and bring your minnows right to your car. They can even do that with a fishing license. If you don't want to go online or by telephone and get your license, um, maybe call ahead to a bait shop and give them your DNR number. It's on your old license um, and they can you know, do all the work there and bring it right out to your car and you can sign it and be on your way. Um, but then I've heard from other bait shop owners where they're not really planning to do much of anything different. So I think a lot of it is whether folks deep down think this is you know, a serious health concern or whether it's overblown. And it's, you know, as you've seen on the national news, it's all over the board, what people really believe. You know, there's a, there's a bit of an emotional tug to that opening weekend for a lot of people. It's such a tradition. What do you think it is? What is that excitement about, you know, just getting out for the first time on opening weekend for a lot of people? You know, it's always a long winter, even though this was a fairly easy winter, we didn't get really cold. We didn't get a lot of snow. Um, but it was a tough winter to get out fishing in a lot of places because the lakes were so full of slush. A lot of people just didn't even try to go. So I think that pent up demand, and especially with the last six weeks, you know, with people not being able to get out to their other activities. I mean, we don't have any professional sports to watch or to attend. We don't have any college sports to watch or attend, no high school sports. Um, golf is open, but uh, other than that, there's not a whole lot going on. And I think folks have had more time to get the boat ready. They've put new line on their fishing reels. I think they're ready to go. I mean, it's, um, it'll be interesting to see, uh, you know, what the crowds are like on opening day. And even for the first couple of weeks in the Memorial Day weekend, a lot of folks really get going after Memorial Day when it starts to warm up outside. What about you? What's on your agenda for the opener? You've got some exciting trip planned? <laughs> well, like everybody else, I had exciting trips planned and they've kind of fallen by the wayside, Greg. They, uh, um, I don't feel comfortable right now asking you know, the, believe it or not, the hardest part of this job is asking folks, hey, can I go fishing with you or can I go hunting with you? And they kind of look at me up and down and, you know, maybe, maybe not. Um, and, and we had some of those set up, but it's, I'm not comfortable joining somebody in a boat where you're in a fairly close quarters and, and I'm imposing on them. Um, the last thing I want to do is, you know, spread something that I don't, I don't even know I have. So we're going to um, kind of play it by ear. We'll probably be working from shore more, um, and which is great because there's a lot of people, a lot of families that fish from shore. And we can maybe talk to, to boaters at boat landing. We're going to try to keep it local. Um, the St. Louis River is a huge popular spot, Island Lake, Fish Lake. So I know we're going to find people. Um, it's just going to be more of a, a shot in the dark at exactly who we talk to. So we'll get out there. Well, I always look forward to reading your coverage of the opener, and uh, we look forward to reading it this weekend. John Myers, Outdoor Writers with Lewis News Tribune. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Greg. Good luck. All right, Greg and John, thank you so very much. Well, the Minnesota DNR says you should fish close to home, which they say is no further than you can go round trip on a tank of gasoline.